So the spooky season has ended, which means it's time to go through every movie I saw in October. I started the month by watching Lego Star Wars Terrifying Tales. This was okay. It wasn't as good as the Lego Star Wars Holiday Special from last year. Whenever there's a pretty good moment, it would end immediately as they said an unfunny joke. The only thing funny about this was the subtle references to the original Star Wars movies and even the Shining? Yeah, that's right. They had a joke in this film about how one of the droids sticks his head through a chopped up door saying, Here's B1496-1138. That was actually really funny, but the rest wasn't at all. I won't be watching this again. Then I watched some of the Addams Family movies. I made a ranking of all of these linked in the iCard. Next I rewatched The Haunted Mansion. This movie is a mess, but an enjoyable mess at that. During the third act, the script starts to go all over the place, but the whole film is fun and has some pretty good thrills sprinkled through. Eddie Murphy is funny, and there are certain moments that got some little chuckles out of me. I just wish that it stuck the landing a bit more because the third act just left a bad taste in my mouth. When a film has a bad third act, that makes me like the film less because that's the last thing we get to see from it. Other than that, it was pretty good. I definitely think they did the best they could with the source material they had, and if you've been on the ride like me, you'd know that they had very little. It was good to rewatch this so my opinions would be up to date, though they relatively stayed the same. I don't really like the plot about Elizabeth at all, but the little thrills it has makes up for it. The acting wasn't good other than Eddie Murphy, and the look of this film is kind of boring. If this got a PG-13 rating and actually tried to genuinely scare you, then it would be better, but it's a children's film that has some decent scares for younger children that they could handle. I can't really say I recommend this because it isn't necessarily a good film, just a really fun, enjoyable, spooky, and underrated family flick. After that, I rewatched Monster House. This is a very good movie right up until the twist. It isn't a bad twist, it just is very weird and abrupt and makes the third act of the film pretty bad. Thankfully, the beginning and the middle are very good. It's produced by both Steven Spielberg and Robert Zemeckis, and their mannerisms in filmmaking are present, but the entire film is off-putting because of its animation. It's similar to the animation in The Polar Express, which is lifelike animation that looks kind of weird the entire time. The babysitter and her friend at the beginning were horrible, characters I hated and thought were annoying and stupid. Luckily, the main kids were pretty likable, so that kind of evened it out for me. With the many problems I have with this, it's still a good movie for October, but I probably won't watch it again next year for the fourth time. On the sixth, I rewatched Little Shop of Horrors. This time I got to see the alternate ending of this tied along with the full film, and it was hilarious. In my opinion, it's a lot better than the other ending. It's so funny to see Audrey 2 on top of the Statue of Liberty and the entire army trying to shoot it down. Other than that, the cast is perfect and the film has great music and cameos. Last year I made a quick review of this and most of those thoughts are up to date, so the link is in the iCard. It's not a very good video, but you can hear more of my thoughts in there. Then I rewatched The Ghost and Mr. Chicken. The Ghost and Mr. Chicken is one of the most underrated classics in my opinion. It's a hilarious film, but also has some pretty creepy moments for the 60s. Don Knotts is really great while being over the top, but being over the top just makes it funnier, and it's great. This is my third time watching this, and it still holds up. I laugh or chuckle every time, and I recommend it especially to people who love old films. The same day, I saw Muppets Haunted Mansion. Muppets Haunted Mansion isn't the best Muppets film or the funniest Muppets outing, but it's still very fun. Although it wasn't very funny and the weird plotline about Peppa and his love was bad, the rest made up for it, I guess. The acting wasn't great, but it still gets you in the Halloween mood. The gray, blue, and purple color palette was also very appealing to the eye, and I rarely took my eyes off the screen. It's not bad in my opinion, but it isn't great. I had a good time with it. <coughs> I had a good time with it. The next day, I watched Insidious Chapter 2. I was going to make a reaction video to this movie, but then it just wasn't working, so I decided to watch it normally and find a different video to make. If I ended up making this video, then you guys would have gotten to see me jump to the ceiling. Intidious Chapter 2 is a really underrated horror movie. It's so scary, tense, and it's entertaining from start to finish. 
that's what I like about horror films. They always keep my attention because whenever I may be dosing off a bit, it always catches my attention again with the loud jump scares. Patrick Wilson gives a great performance, and this movie is a great sequel to Insidious. It ties along with that film so well, and while it isn't as scary as the first overall, there are definitely some horrifying moments in my opinion. Some of the jump scares were coming from a mile away, yet somehow they still made me jump. On the other hand, some of them came out of nowhere and got me so good. After that, I watched Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark which is my new least favorite horror movie. That said, it actually isn't bad. It's just okay, edging good. The acting isn't very good, and my biggest problem with this is how messy the scares are. What I mean by that is that it tries to be really scary, but it isn't, and it just cuts away too fast and is ruined by bad acting. It's just messy with how it tries to scare you. It feels like a version of Goosebumps with horrific images and jump scares, but it still isn't scary. The entire film felt kind of lazy and generic. It had some creepy moments, and the concept of the film is pretty nice, but I wish it was executed better. Some of the stories I liked, but others were strange. Looking at you, pale lady. This movie had lots of potential in my eyes, and some of it was great, but other parts weren't. I liked how the whole plot was centered around the holiday of Halloween, and that made me enjoy it more. It was entertaining at best, and not boring at all, which makes me have a positive outlook on it despite the many problems it has. I do like the film, but I just wish it did some things differently. On the 11th, I rewatched Scooby-Doo. I mean, eh. This was like my 6th rewatch of this. I do not know why, but I keep coming back to this movie. I thought that it was pretty good before, but now, not really. I mean, you can sometimes feel James Gunn's presence as a writer, and Matthew Lillard is definitely great as Shaggy, but everything else is not good. It's certainly an enjoyable movie, yet the poop jokes, plot, and VFX are all bad. Honestly, even though the VFX are bad, it kind of adds to the feel of this film, so I can't count that as a really bad thing, but they still don't look real. The twist at the end was laughably bad and was all over the place. It went from one thing to another, and it felt like they were trying to replicate a Shyamalan film. I remember I used to watch this movie at my grandma's house and liked it, but now I can acknowledge that it's not good. It's an entertaining flick, but it's also a pretty bad one. I'm split down the middle. A couple days later, I watched Hubie Halloween. It was incredibly cringy, but also very fun. It had several genuinely funny moments in my opinion, and it was just a good time. The Halloween aesthetic was awesome, and the whole thing gets you in the Halloween spirit. Some of the jokes really worked for me and made me laugh out loud, but sadly others didn't. I'd say a majority of them didn't land because they were either immature or just not funny, as you would imagine. It was occasionally awkward because there would be a pause after a joke, but I wouldn't be laughing, so it would just be weird. Even though it's a comedy, it did actually have some decently creepy moments, and while that made the pacing a bit off, it was fine. There was a weird side plot about a guy that is actually a werewolf that was weird, but I mean, what did I expect? The cameos and appearances in this film were also fun to pick out, and most of them I think I caught. Adam Sandler's accent was hard to understand most of the time, but for the character he was playing, he gave a fine performance. Kevin James was pretty funny in this, and the rest of the supporting cast was solid as well. The tribute to Cameron Boyce midway through the credits was heartbreaking and such a nice touch to the film. I do have to say, I wasn't expecting a reveal at the end at all. Now that I think about it, it makes a lot of sense, but I didn't see it coming. The person who ended up kidnapping these people seemed so innocent, yet ended up being the kidnapper and I was actually really surprised. I cringed at this, sometimes didn't laugh, but it's still a really entertaining and fun time and definitely got me excited for Halloween. I have a few too many issues with it to call it good, but because of its rewatchability factor and enjoyment level, I liked it as a whole. The next day, I rewatched Halloween Town. I don't have nostalgia for this, but somehow I still like it. It's a poorly made film, I get that, but I still enjoy it. The CGI sucks, the acting is bad, and everything is cheesy, but that's what you should be expecting while watching a Disney Channel original movie from the 1990s. It's just a fun children's movie, and that's about all I have to say. Then I watched Happy Death Day. 
Groundhog Day meets every slasher movie ever, and it really works. It just has a nice spin to it, and it's just a self-aware horror comedy. It didn't scare me as much as it made me laugh, but it still worked. Probably the scariest thing about it is the baby mask. That thing itself is creepy looking, but everything else isn't scary. The plot was unique, but after a while it felt kind of repetitive. Some of the characters I didn't care for, and some of the film had some stuff that could have been removed. There were a couple weird decisions and small plot points that should have been handled differently or even cut out entirely. They weren't horrible, just kind of strangely placed into this. It was still really enjoyable and just a fun horror movie that isn't just your average slasher. I liked that it was something different, but some of it could have been better. Overall, it was just a solid film that I'm glad I watched. After that, I rewatched Beetlejuice. With my second viewing of Beetlejuice, I can say that it was actually a bit better. I'm giving it the same score I previously had it at, but there were some things I noticed about it that were better this time around. I thought that the comedy was quite a bit superior than it was before, and I realized how great of a performance Michael Keaton gives. He plays such an excessive and over-the-top character, and the wacky performance he gives is undeniably great. If I'm being honest, I have to say this movie dips in quality a little after the character of Beetlejuice comes into play, not necessarily because of the character, but because of how some of the plot points were carried out. Other than that, this movie is amazing. It has such a unique premise, and while the visuals themselves aren't great, the sets, costumes, and puppets are phenomenal. The look of this film is just awesome, and there is so much to enjoy. I laughed out loud several times, and certain shots are iconic. A great movie for October, it has a creepy plot on paper, but on screen it's a funny and memorable 80s film. On the 17th, I saw Happy Death Day to You. This movie is so much like the first, yet somehow not at all the first. The first is simply just about a girl that relives the same day after she dies, until she finds out who's killing her. In this one, she wakes up in a parallel universe, and there are different versions of everything in her life. She finds out that Carter's roommate has been altering time, so she needs to recruit people to help figure out how to put her back in the right timeline. Every day she wakes up and they don't remember anything, so she has to memorize everything they learned from the previous days in order for them to send her back to her original timeline. Sound confusing? It is. The plot may be a little too whacked up for this film, but the film is still great. To my surprise, this movie was much more a comedy sci-fi than a horror, but it isn't that bad. It was marketed as a horror film, but it's fine being a comedy with a touch of sci-fi and horror. It deals with time travel and alternate dimensions, but it also has many jokes and a killer. The only flaw with the genre switch are that it's harder to follow and the pacing seems a bit wacky. I guess it's more of a science fiction-esque horror comedy, but I laughed more than I was scared. The performances are all good and this movie is still self-aware, though I may not have been as invested in the sequel as I was with the first. I do actually like this one a little bit better, however, as it was more entertaining and didn't feel as repetitive as the first at times. There were also some touching moments that dealt with Tree and her mother. I didn't expect to say that about this film, but here we are. As a whole, Happy Death Day was an entertaining genre blender and a worthy sequel. The next day, I watched Goosebumps. Such a fun, entertaining popcorn flick. Jack Black does a great job of portraying R.L. Stein as well as Slappy the Dummy, and there are some genuinely funny moments in this film. I think it's just a great Halloween film, and I watch it every year. The score composed by Danny Elfman is perfect for this film and works so well. I can't stress this enough, but this is just a fun movie. My biggest problems with it are the twist and the special effects. The twist kind of just took the characters it affected into a place I didn't want the plot to take them, and the special effects look just like animation. They aren't bad, but they could be better. Goosebumps isn't anything groundbreaking on a filmmaking standpoint, but man do I like it. It's funny, exciting, enjoyable, and has great performances all around. I made a video comparing the two Goosebumps films last year, so if you want, you can watch it. It's outdated, so if you don't, then that's fine. Then I watched Goosebumps 2. You know what? I liked the first one better. I used to say that I liked this one better, but to be honest, I enjoyed the first one more this year. I guess things change after time, but this is still good. 
The CGI in this film is really bad. The green screens look super fake, and all the monsters look like animation in a live-action film. I said the same thing about the first, but this one came out three years later, so I expected it to have better visuals. It doesn't, and to be honest, it has worse. Not all of the jokes land, some do, but others are just cringy. Also, why the heck would they not include Jack Black as Arl Stein more in this? He was easily the best thing about the first, yet in this one, he's only in the end, and just for a little bit. It could have been a lot better with him, but like I said, I still like this film. The overall concept is fun and a good place to take this series after the first, and what they did with it was pretty good. I like seeing Halloween come to life, and it just makes for a fun movie. Most of the performances are really good, mostly from the lead three characters who were really likable, relatable, etc. I really liked the characters of Sonny and Sam, and thought they were good newcomers to this franchise. The scenes that Jack Black were in were really, really great. He made the best jokes in the film, and at least they decided to include him in a couple scenes. I know a lot of people hate this movie, but I can't help but to like it. The first is better, but I still really enjoy this film. After that, I watched the original Child's Play. Chucky gets shot in the shoulder, burnt alive, decapitated, shot in the heart, yet still comes back for multiple sequels, as well as a miniseries. Chucky is invincible. Confirmed. Also, now that we're getting into more of the amazing horror movies, if I don't talk about them a lot, it's because I talked about them in my Top 10 Horror Movies video. On the 21st, I watched The Nightmare Before Christmas. This is just one of the most unique movies ever made in my opinion. It blends two very different holidays and it works really well. I'm genuinely shocked at how great this movie turned out and it's one of the best Halloween movies. And yes, I think it's more of a Halloween movie than a Christmas one. Next I watched Denis Villeneuve's Dune. This was a visual masterpiece and I loved it. Link in the iCard for my video about it. Then I watched Ghostbusters. This used to be in my top 20 of all time. After rewatching it, it's far from that now, but I still absolutely love the film. It's hard for me to talk about this film after watching it for a fourth time because all of my thoughts have seemed to just jumble together. Don't know if that makes any sense, but I guess I just don't really know what to say. The acting is great and hilarious, the concept is iconic and memorable, memorable and all the characters are amazing. After that, I watched Friday the 13th. Friday the 13th is regarded as one of the most iconic horror films from the 80s. Is it one of the best? No, but I see how some people could say it's iconic. It introduces the Voorhees family, and this is probably the first summer camp slasher movie, so I see how it's memorable. I'm not very interested in continuing this franchise, but I am interested in seeing Jason, hockey mask and all. I knew that the killer in this was his mother beforehand, but that was still kind of disappointing. This movie's biggest strength isn't the kills, acting, characters, or stuff like that. It's the camp, Enos. Get it? And cheese. It's just an enjoyable time that I had fun with. It's a low-budget film, so the acting and script aren't great, but it's a fun, gory, cheesy, low-budget slasher that brought most of what I came for. That is, for this type of horror flick. On the 25th, I rewatched Psycho, but this time it was the uncut version, also in Blu-ray. Oh, and it was my third time in 10 months. Yeah, you heard me. The next day, I rewatched Coraline. Coraline is the creepiest animated movie I've ever seen, and one of, if not the scariest family film in my opinion. If I'm being honest, this movie's creepier than most horror films that are actually classified under the genre of horror. That might sound like an overstatement to one that hasn't seen this film, but if you have, you can at least see where I'm coming from a tiny bit. The Other Mother is a genuinely scary character that has a genuinely terrifying design, mostly at the end when she looks like a daddy long legs. She's a great antagonist for this and so hateable. The other characters are also written very well and each serves a unique purpose to the film. They may seem random at first, but are used later in the story very well. To state the obvious, the animation is gorgeous. It's truly fantastic and one of the most good looking stop motion films. The way it uses color to symbolize certain themes and tones is remarkable. This was my third October watching Coraline and it only got better. I will continue to see this every year and if you haven't seen it, I believe it's a must watch.
Oh my gosh. Then I watched John Carpenter's Halloween. This is a must-see for every horror fan, and I mean it. If you love slashers, you have to watch it. It's one of the movies that started the entire genre. After that, I watched Scream. Scream was a dream come true, and one of my new favorite movies ever. Please watch this if you haven't, you will not regret it. On the 30th, I rewatched Hocus Pocus. Just a Halloween classic. I'm sad that I missed out on seeing this in theaters in my hometown when I got the chance a couple years ago, especially because it was free, but it nonetheless got a little better this year. The setting and atmosphere is very enjoyable, a main part of that is the really Halloween look and feel. I'm also sad this movie got horrible reviews and flopped at the box office when it came out. Actually, I'm not sad that it flopped at the box office because Disney released it in July. What were they thinking? Would it be that hard to release it in October, or at least September? Other than that, in my opinion, the Sanderson sisters crossed the line of campiness a tiny bit. I know they were supposed to be over the top, but sometimes it was a bit much. The actresses still gave really good performances. Bette Midler's I Put a Spell on You is fun, same thing goes with the film of Hocus Pocus itself. This is a fun Halloween watch, and one that gets you in that spooky mood. It gets too much hate. On Halloween, I rewatched It's the Great Pumpkin, Charlie Brown. Really fun and cute TV movie. I seem to watch it every year on Halloween night. I guess it's just become a tradition without being a tradition. Also on Halloween, I watched Should I Be Ashamed of This? Curious George, a Halloween boo fest. Okay, okay, yeah, I know what you're thinking, but this is like the most nostalgic film ever for me, so of course I gotta see it again. Please don't judge, we all have these types of movies, and you can't deny it. And that's what I watched during the spooky season. It was a packed month for me, but what but what do you watch? Tell me down in the comment section, but until then, stay tuned and subscribe to Cinema Ranks.